Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to show you how I make some of my raw crackers or raw breads. I am on a juice fast and I've been saving up some of my pulp and I am going to make some beautiful raw bread with my leftover pulp that I make my milk. And I decided to save my tomato and pepper pulp. I have some there and I have some underneath here. You can use any milk pulp that you have saved, put aside, rather than throwing it away. You could actually put this back into a bread or a cracker and uh, you could enjoy it. Even if you're not raw, 100% raw, you still could enjoy these natural crackers without having this stuff go straight into the garbage or compost. Compost is not the end of the world. It's going to feed our garden, but we like to be able to make some bread. It's a great snack food. So I'm going to show you how I just kind of throw things together. There is really no recipe. Whatever pulp you have, if you find your mixture is a little too wet, then you could maybe grind up some nuts or some seeds and you could add that to it until you get a nice texture that you like. If you want to make a cracker, then I say add extra crushed seeds. That's going to help give it a nice bite when you bite into your cracker. So I'm just going to get a bowl and I'm just going to throw everything in and give this a mix before I see the texture. But I do want to add a little bit of salt. Now, uh, you could actually season this any way you want. I'm going to use a little bit of steak spice. I love the taste of steak spice. I also love the taste of rosemary. I'm going to put some of that since this is tomato and pepper. And I'm making a savory, a savory bread. And this is a good way to repurpose all this deliciousness because when you make milk, <laughs> it's like, it's like a bonus. When you take almonds, this is a mixture of almonds, cashews, and coconut. So when you're making a milk, not only do you get a milk, but you can still use that pulp and get another product out of it. So it's very versatile, especially if you eat raw. Make a nice big raw dinner and just have a little bit of bread next to it. Um, I'm the type that I need to have bread almost with everything, so yeah. <laughs> That's always been my problem. But it's nice to know that I could actually make a nice bread just by using this. I'm on a juice fast right now, so I am just going to kind of pat it and lick my finger to see if I need extra salt. Texture-wise, I'm going to have to use my hands to see if I like the texture. Okay, I'm going to put some hemp seeds in here. And again, how much? It really doesn't matter. really does not matter as long as you get that texture so you can spread this out and make uh, make a bread that's gonna work now I'm gonna also use a little bit of flax seeds not only is it gonna help bind my bread but I, I'm gonna get omegas out of it right okay so we're gonna put some flax seeds that's going to help bind it. There we go. I'm going to use a little bit of nutritional yeast, of course. And if you find that you got to a point where now everything's way too dry, uh, then you could just a little bit of water. And that's going to help it. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of chili flakes. You know, that's optional, guys. Okay, so we're going to give that a good mix. Now, if you want, put on a glove. This way you can feel the texture. Uh, this is going to be a delicious and such a beautiful, beautiful bread. Now, I wish I could taste this so I know exactly what I've got going in here. But... Like I said, I'm on a fast and I cannot. I will put some extra 
rosemary. There we go. I'm also going to put some mushroom powder, guys. I've got a little bit of turkey tail here. Not only is that good, it helps boost your immune system. There we go. And that's what I'm using. Turkey tail powder. I also make my own. These I buy because I also put them in coffees or teas. So there we go. We've got mushroom. We've got everything in there. I wish I could taste it. But I'm on a water fast. Not a water fast. Juice fast. I had water one day. And now I'm on a juice fast. Last time... The biggest juice fast I've ever done is 60 days. And I did it because uh, five years ago, I think it's about five years ago. I can't even remember now. I want to just forget that day. I woke up and all of a sudden my face was just like, it was like melted wax. It was just kind of hanging on one side. Had no idea. I thought, I got so scared. I thought I was having a stroke. Went and see. Uh, the doctor and he told me I had Ramsey Hunt syndrome. Wow, that was the worst day of my well, one of the worst days in my life. Not the worst day, but I could not believe what was happening to me. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. And the doctor was telling me uh, because uh, of my age, he was saying that you know the chances of my face going back was probably not the best chance. So I figured, you know what? I'm gonna do a juice fast and see what happens. That when he saw me, he, he saw me again, he was really freaked out. He says, I cannot believe how much your face went back. Let me see, how is that? Oh, I'm just trying to see what else I wanna put in there. Okay, I'm gonna put some black pepper. But life goes on, right guys? I'm not gonna cry over something that I have no control on. But I did do a juice for a long time. I did it for 60 days and it really, really helped. Uh, get ready to lose a lot of weight if you don't want to lose all that weight. Um, yeah, I kind of turn into like a, I look like a rake. But it did help me. And you know, if you start eating again, some of the weight will come back. That's not a problem. Uh, but it did help detox me from a lot of stuff that I wanted to be detoxed with. Uh, I was also taking a lot of medication the doctor gave me, and I just didn't want all that si that stuff in my system after after it did what it had to do. I just wanted that stuff out of my because don't forget, guys, our bodies inside are all filters. Stuff that's not good for us that we find in foods and air and whatever. Something's got to filter it, and you know it's like a vacuum cleaner, guys. If you don't clean that filter or replace that filter, your vacuum is not going to work. So the idea is to always keep that filter clean so your vacuum lives a long life. Otherwise, you're going to have to replace it. And our bodies are so precious that, you know what, we need to do whatever we have to do to detox. And that's important. Okay, let me just... Erica, can you just taste this? Tell me if it needs... Oh yeah, maybe some... Okay, let me mix it a few other things and then I'm going to make it taste. I'm going to put some garlic. I could put crushed garlic, but I'm too lazy to have to clean anything today. So I'm going to put some garlic. That's going to help. I've got some onion flakes I'm going to get. Now, I could have used fresh onions, but that's only going to take longer for it to dehydrate. This way, I'm going to put this in. Okay, there we go. I'm going to put some of my nigella seeds. They're very, very good, guys. They have a nice, um, nice flavor to it. It's really a nice, just, it brings it one level up. Okay, so uh, since I'm doing a juice fast again, I didn't want to do a super long one. What I think I'm going to do this time around is maybe every month or every two months, I'm going to do just one week of juice fasting. And then back to eating uh, more raw than I'm doing now. I do eat mostly raw, but I do dabble. 
I always dabble. Not the best thing, but I do dabble. But, you know, I'm not one of those people that you say, you have to do 100% raw or, you know, the end of the world is going to come. As long as you do as much as you can raw, uh, even if it's like 75% raw, that's better for you. I find it does anyhow for myself. I was going more like maybe 90% uh, raw. I would have just a little bit, but I'm going to try and do 100 again just for the summer. And then the winter, you know, I got to have that hot potato. Uh, you know, if I'm going to have a little bit of rice in the summer, it's not going to kill me either. I oh, know there's something else missing and I can't put my finger on it. Garlic. I think that's good. Okay, I find the texture of this is nice. Now, I'm going to just let this rest. Just so that the flax seeds kind of swells up and sucks up that moisture and this way it activates all those omegas but if, it, if I want to do this right away I could also because since the flax seeds are already crushed you're able to absorb the omegas a lot easier than if your flax seeds are still whole and if you don't have flax seeds you could also use chia seeds so I uh, let it sit here just for five minutes and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna spread this up now if you want to make raw crackers you need something to dehydrate you could get yourself a small dehydrator or a cheap dehydrator uh, i have a good for you and it has i think about six trays uh, but thanks to my oven that i bought years back it has a dehydrator on it if i need to use the oven later on all i have to do is just pull it out cook whatever i have to cook and then put it back in and I'm able to dehydrate it as low as I want it. Also, if you're dehydrating to kind of keep its, um, the structure of the vitamins and everything, you do not want to go past 118, between 115 and 118. But then if you keep this too low, you have the chance of maybe, you know, nasty stuff growing on your bread. You don't want that. But this is going to go pretty fast because everything is a little crunchy. I put onions that were already dehydrated. I put some seeds. Um, I have the pulp of the milk. Uh, the only thing that was wet was my tomatoes and peppers that I made my juice in. So there you go. So I'm going to see you in about five minutes and then we're going to put this on my sheet and we're going to stretch it out. All right guys, there we go. I have my sheet. Now if you don't have one of these because you don't have one of those dehydrators with a drawer, what you can use is uh, you can use uh, parchment paper for sure. Look what I got myself. Aren't they beautiful? These are corn flowers. They're called corn flower fireworks. Uh, you could actually um, put this in teas. There's so many things that you can use it. I'm going to take some and I am going to put it right in my mixture. And I'm going to have all those pretty colors in my, in my bread. You know, sometimes when you eat, you got to make it look pretty. Okay. These are edible. So that is not a problem. Just to add a little pizzazz to the bread. Mm -hmm. Not too many. Just to add color here and there. Okay. Okay. Let me just wash my hands. I'm just going to gather it into a ball. Now, you can make this thick if you want, and then I would say slice it right away once you make your, almost like a biscotti. So when you grab it, it's like a chunky bread, or you can make it flat. There we go. You can make it flat and eat it up. Like a cracker, I guess, eh? Okay. I'm going to try and make it as square as possible. I don't know. Should we make it like a bread, Erica? Um, or should we... Let me use this. Hold on a second, guys. And 
look at that. Because I'm making bread or crackers out of it. And let me tell you, even if you're not a raw vegan, you will enjoy this. So, you know, utilize it. And if you don't want to make it like a raw bread, you can always take all that pulp and put it in a bread that you're going to cook. Okay, so I am going to make it rather than a cracker. Let's see if I could get it like a bread. So I'm basically cutting this into the shape of like a biscotti. Let me see, is this knife better? Yeah, cut it right down and then flip it over. Yeah. Trying to do this without Okay, let me put that on a cutting board this way. I don't make a mess on there. Okay, let me use this. It's just going to be nicer. Everything's going to be nicer. Everything's going to be perfect shape. Okay, you might have to shape it up a bit. So make it as firm. I just want to show you all the different ways that you can do this. Okay, let's cut it straight down. There we go. And now we're going to pick it up, shape it if you have to, and put it on your... There we go. And this year will stay together. And I'm going to have beautiful bread to eat with my salads my raw dishes there we go pick it up pretty it's not going to be perfect perfect but that's okay and this is going to be delicious and remember what you put in there you know the saying right whatever you put in that's what you're going to get if you put little, you're going to get little. You put a lot, you're going to get a lot. And always work with flavors. If you like the flavor, then it's perfect. I'm going to put that aside. Just reshape it a bit. Not hard. I think that making bread <laughs> as a raw vegan is really easy. There we go. Tuck that in. And how pretty are those flowers? Okay, push it over. Make sure it's holding its own. Yeah, I prefer, you can do it whole, but I prefer, I prefer that, um, and my hands are clean, guys. Don't freak out on me. I prefer cutting it ahead of time rather than trying to cut something that's a little too firm so this way I get the shape and size I want put that over remember this is soft so the firmer you make it the easier it's going to be but it has to be a firm width guys it can't be a firm uh, that's not wet you got to have moisture in it so you can actually maneuver it and do it there we go okay shape 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 yeah it has to be firm but still moist that you can shape it to how you like it and the flax seeds is definitely going to hold this together for me now how firm you want your bread is really up to you. If you want it more pliable, um, it's never going to be like regular bread, right, guys? Don't think that you're going to have bread like you would have, like a baguette. But you're using up. There we go. You're using up your pulp. Your This is all fiber. You're using up your pulp, you're adding ingredients to it, you're adding good stuff to it. So it's going to be more like a cracker, but it's still going to be delicious. 
and if I want to make sandwich if I wanted to make like a sandwich bread I'm not, not sure if you ever had like a raw bread uh, you make it pretty flat you don't make it that it crumbles on you and then you cut them to the shape of I'm gonna have to do it for you you cut into the shape of squares almost like a sandwich and then you can stuff it and eat it that way okay let me just push that in together but yeah okay so here we go that's what I have try to get it as firm as you can so it doesn't break on you that one's gonna loosen up okay I know I'm talking but I'm not even finishing my sentences very bad habit of mine but you get the, the jit right you get the idea of what I'm trying to show you here and I know a lot of you have been asking me Connie show me your raw recipes and I'm gonna show you what I do you could turn it into a recipe this is just what I do if I didn't have these ingredients it would have been different ingredients but I'd still be making this stuff okay so there it is it's going into my dehydrator I wish you could see how pretty the colors really are maybe I should open the light it's gloom and doom here guys it's raining in Montreal okay so there's the bread how beautiful is it and how pretty are how pretty are those corn flowers running through the crackers so what I'm gonna do now is I'm putting it on the mylar sheet and after a while I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna put them on this net sheet where but only when I'm able to flip them not before that otherwise they're gonna break but there it is I could have probably put it on there directly but I rather have it this way so this way they dry up on one side and then I'm gonna flip them over dry a little more and then I'm gonna put them on the net and then the air is gonna circulate right through right now the top is gonna to dry but these are gonna be super delicious and when I make a nice salad I'm gonna grab one of these slices and yummy 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 so there you go very easy use up your pulp use up your um, the pulp of your juice your milk do not throw that away if you put in the compost I say you're forgiven because you know we're gonna be able to feed uh, your garden but if you throw it in a, a landfill I mean it still goes back into nature but it doesn't it doesn't work for you this is gonna work for you this is gonna nourish your body and you're gonna get lots of fiber with this so there you go love you guys and I'm gonna see you in another video I'll show you what these look like when they're done and I'll see you very soon. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.